Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to the channel. And no one's here for the intro. We're starting right with the... Unlike Jack U Festival Trap from like 2016, which sat at 150 BPM, we're gonna slow it down. We're putting the BPM to 130 for a slower sway... sway feel? Either way, get yourself a kick and a snare and put it into this pattern. On every beat, add an open hat. Together, that sounds like. Simple drum beat, but trust me, we'll be adding all sorts of. And if you're gonna get that crazy with sounds, your listener is gonna need something to latch onto as they get assaulted by robot noises. I don't care how cool it sounds after you've hit the fattest blunt. But you gotta have an anchor. And for this song, it's gonna be this very simple, but very effective drum beat. But let's expand upon it a little bit and add in this noisy sine wave. Now this was a sample given to me by my lovely stream team. But from what I know, this is made with an FM sine wave with a little bit of wide noise on it and some OTT. Layer on a whooshy whoosh on top of that. All tied together with a sub bass. You can't hear it? Can't forget the spice rack. And altogether, this will sound thick, solid, and tight. Now that we have a solid foundation to build off of, we can now get into the big. Hey, are you a smart producer? I know you are because you know that in addition to making bangers, you gotta have a strong social media presence, AKA the marketing. Cause in reality, no one's gonna hear your music if they don't know you exist. Don't believe me? I'm gonna flash a bunch of things on the screen and uh, you tell me if you recognize them. But don't just post boring pictures. Check this out. Today's sponsor, DistroKid, they've got a goodie menu. And inside here are a robust set of tools that make releasing your music super easy and professional. <laughs> Labels? Who needs those? Some of these tools include promo cards for social media, Spotify canvas generators to make your releases stand out, meme generators because just because Twitter's dying doesn't mean we can't post on there. Plus, you can set up those social phone numbers so you can be just like your favorite K-pop idol and uh, talk to your fans. And on a more serious note, there's also help in here to get you connected with industry pros and protect your music from unauthorized releases and fake uploads. Plus, most of these are included with your $23 a year subscription to DistroKid. If you want to support my channel, sign up using my VIP link. It'll also give you 7% off your first year. Thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now, even though this type of festival trap shares a lot of the same sound design as dubstep, which is why it's also sometimes called hybrid trap, the flow is very different. With dubstep, you want maximum headbanging potential. So everything's put on the grid in a very predictable pattern. But with hybrid trap or festival trap, whatever the YouTube title I decide on says it is, the flow tends to have a lot more sway to it. A lot more groove, sway groove. Swag, swag, meaning we have to get the drop pattern perfect. So what I like to do instead of going down a big rabbit hole of sound design is I like to map out the pattern using hi-hats and these will eventually double as our drop transient anyway. So I've done that in several sections here. And once you get a flow that you like, you can put it onto something like this machine gun base. There's lots of great sound design tutorials on YouTube that can show you how to make this, or you can just find a sample. Thanks once again to the stream team for providing, but the most important thing is that it's punchy. You'll also notice this second pass sounds a little bit more metallic, and that's because I add corpus on it, and making sure to click this little triangle, and I'm taking the MIDI from the sub just so that it stays in key. I've also transposed it so it's in key, and you can just copy these settings down. The beam setting gives it a really nice metallic sound to add even more 
swag, a polyrhythmic element. This means two different rhythms playing at the same time, but still sound cool. So to get this effect, find a vocal, and I used volume automation with a plugin like Duck to make a rhythm. I'll play around with this until it sounds cool, and it might take some practice getting these rhythms to work together, but if done right, it gets something that sounds like... Which is cool, not really great on its own, but played with everything else. Hold up! That's sounding a little too repetitive. That's not swag. So I use this trick that a lot of future bass and melodic dubstep artists use. The multiverse of melodies. All that is, is an arrangement technique where I make smart variations of the loop that we just made here. And much like every multiverse movie, you have an original, you have a variant, you've got an exact clone, and you've got the evil twin. Now I go much deeper into this topic in this video, but you're essentially keeping the flow of the drop without making it sound overly repetitive. So for the variations, I just like to change up the endings a little bit, like adding this triplet. <laughs> Or how about some bongos? Because Skrillex, of course. You can get this effect with the drum bus, turning the transients up. And this wouldn't be one of my videos unless I included some kind of Valorant reference. Sometimes your variation can even come in the beginning, like this slam. Heck, get crazy with it. <laughs> And then I just copy over these same techniques, find a different vocal sample, chop it up onto a slightly different rhythm, which creates a response drop. And now we're combining two different arrangement techniques with the multiverse of melodies and call and response. Meaning, we have a full drop. Heck, we could even make a second drop. We're done, right? That's all we need, right? So why am I stuck? When listening to music, y'all just skip to the drop anyway, right? I mean, that's what I do. I'm guilty of that. But it got me thinking about all the anime I watch. And I know this is kind of a weird tangent, <laughs> but hear me out. I'm talking more about the fight scenes. Like, they're really flashy and cool to look at, and a really great way to introduce people to what essentially is anime. But all the most memorable ones are the ones that have stakes attached to them. Like, two former friends fighting over who's right. A boy trying to save his only remaining family from a demon that's about to destroy an entire village. Evil clown man versus funny pirate guy. <laughs> Like, it doesn't even have to be serious either, but we as producers can have the same effect with our music by including a strong intro before our drop. Set the stage so that when it does hit, it hits even harder than it already does. It just drives home the point that context matters. I guess that's why certain websites do the same thing. What do you mean this is a social media app? Okay, fine. Let's do an intro. Descending Reese Bass. Some ominous chords. But with also some auto pan on it. All tied together with the spookiest piano. Because how will you ever get an R.L. Grimes Halloween mix if you don't have anything spooky in your song? Finish that off with some percussion loops. Some spooky bells, because, I don't know, Bloodborne or something. And a clap, because trap. And slowly fade in the vocal that we chopped. Because context. 
And to bring us into the drop, we go abrupt. It's 2023 now, especially in this BPM, buildups just feel super long and drawn out. So for maximum impact, let's reverse this triangle. The instrument, not the wave, and that same vocal that we chopped off. All together. 